good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. I guess I don't really know when you're watching this. So I can say good morning, but actually you could be watching it at any time of the day. I um, hope you're enjoying it. We are carrying on today with George's Marvellous Medicine and we're reading chapter seven. Um, it's all going to get a bit interesting now because at the end of chapter six, George had finished making the medicine and he was about to give it to Grandma. Uh, so chapter seven is called Grandma Gets the Medicine. Grandma sat hunched in her chair by the window. The wicked little eyes followed George closely as he crossed the room towards her. You're late, she snapped. I don't think I am, Grandma. Don't interrupt me in the middle of a sentence, she shouted. But you've finished your sentence, Grandma. There you go again, she cried, always interrupting and arguing. You really are a tiresome little boy. What's the time? It's exactly 11 o'clock, Grandma. You're lying as usual. Stop talking so much and give me my medicine. Shake the bottle first, then pour it into the spoon and make sure it's a whole spoonful. Are you going to gulp it all down in one go? George asked her, or will you sip it? What I do is none of your business, the old woman said. Fill the spoon. As George removed the cork and began very slowly to pour thick brown stuff into the spoon, he couldn't help thinking back upon all the mad and marvellous things that had gone into the making of this crazy stuff. The shaving soap, the hair remover, the dandruff cure, the automatic washing machine powder, the flea powder for dogs, the shoe polish, the black pepper, the horseradish sauce, and all the rest of them. Not to mention the powerful animal pills and powders and liquids, and the brown paint. Open your mouth wide, Grandma, he said, and I'll pop it in. The old hag had opened her small, wrinkled mouth, showing disgusting, pale brown teeth. Here we go, George cried out, swallow it down. He pushed the spoon well into her mouth and tipped the mixture down her throat. Then he stepped back to watch the result. It was worth watching. Grandma yelled, ooh-wee! And her whole body shot up, whoosh, into the air. <coughs> it was exactly as though someone had pushed an electric wire through the underneath of her chair and switched on the current. Up she went like a jack-in-the-box, and she didn't come down. She stayed there, suspended in mid-air, about two feet up, still in a sitting position. But rigid now, frozen, quivering, the eyes bulging, her hair standing straight up on end. Is something wrong, Grandma? George asked her politely. Right, Suspended up there in space, the old, old girl was beyond speaking. The shock that George's marvellous mixture had given her must have been tremendous. You'd have thought she'd have swallowed a red hot poker the way she took off from that chair. And there she is, hovering, stuck, with her hair stuck on end and her eyes bulging out, not being able to say anything. Then, down she came, with a plop into her seat. Call the fire brigade, she shouted suddenly. My stomach's on fire. It's just medicine, Grandma, George said. It's good, strong stuff. Fire, the old woman yelled. Fire in the basement, get a bucket, man the hoses, do something quick. Call it, Grandma, George said, but he got a bit of a shock when he saw the smoke coming out of her mouth and out of her nostrils. Clouds and clouds of black smoke were coming out of her nose and blowing round the room. By golly, you really are on fire, George said. Of course I'm on fire, she yelled. I'll be burnt to a crisp, I'll be frizzled to a frizzle, I'll be boiled like a beetroot. George ran into the kitchen and came back with a jug of water. Open your mouth, Grandma, he cried. He could hardly see her for the smoke, but he managed to pour half a jugful down her throat. A sizzling sound, the kind you get if you hold a hot frying pan under a cold tap. Came, uh, came up deep from Grandma's stomach. The old hag buckled and shied and snorted. She gasped and gurgled. Spouts of water came shooting out of her and smoke cleared away. The fire's out, George announced proudly. You'll be all right now, Grandma. All right, she yelled. Who's all right? There's jacky jumpers in my tummy. The tummy. There's squigglers in my belly. There's bangers in my bottom. She began bouncing up and down in the chair. Quite obviously, she was not very comfortable. You'll find it's doing a lot of good, that medicine, Grandma, George said. Good, she screamed, doing me 
good. It's killing me. She then began to bulge. She was swelling. She was puffing up all over. Someone was pumping her up. That's how it looked. Was she going to explode? Her face was turning from purple to green. But wait, she had a puncture somewhere. George could hear the hiss of escaping air. She stopped swelling. She was going down. She was slowly getting thinner again, shrinking back and back slowly to her shrivelly old self. How's things, Grandma? George said. No answer. Then a funny thing happened. Okay, and before we get to the funny thing that's happened, this is Grandma all bloated and big before she started shriveling down again and hissing. Okay, then a funny thing happened. Grandma's body gave a sudden sharp twist and a sudden sharp jerk and she flipped herself clear out of the chair and landed neatly on her two feet on the carpet. That's terrific, Grandma, George cried. You haven't stood up like that for years. Look at you. And you're standing up all on your own and you're not even using a stick. Grandma didn't even hear him. The frozen, pop-eyed look was back with her again now. She was miles away in another world. Marvellous medicine, George told himself. He found it fascinating to stand there, watching what it was doing to the whole old hag. What next, he wondered. He soon found out. And there he is after he's doused her with water and cooled the fire. Suddenly, she began to grow. It was quite slow at first. Just a very gradual inching upwards. Up, up, up. Inch by inch, getting taller and taller. About an inch every few seconds. And in the beginning, George didn't notice it. But when she had passed the five foot six mark and was going up towards being six foot tall, George gave a jump and shouted, Hey, Grandma, you're growing, you're growing up. Hang on, Grandma, you'd better stop now or you'll be hitting the ceiling. But Grandma didn't stop. It was a truly fantastic sight. This ancient, scrawny old woman getting taller and taller, longer and longer, thinner and thinner as though she were a piece of elastic being pulled upwards by invisible bands. And that's her going up and up and up, reaching the ceiling, much taller than George. When the top of her head actually touched the ceiling, George thought she was bound to stop. But she didn't. There was a sort of scrunching noise and bits of plaster and cement came raining down. Hadn't you better stop now, Grandma? George said. Daddy's just had this whole room repainted. But there was no stopping her now. Soon her head and shoulders had completely disappeared through the ceiling and she was still going. George dashed upstairs to his own bedroom and there she was coming through the floor like a mushroom. Whoopee! She shouted, binding her voice at, voice at last. Hallelujah! Here I come. And there she is coming out through George's floor in his bedroom. Steady on, Grandma, George said. With a hey, nonny no, and up we go, she shouted. Just watch me grow. This is my room, George said. Look at the mess you're making. Terrific medicine, she cried. Give me some more. She's dotty as a donut, George thought. Come on, boy, give me some more, she yelled. Dish it out, I'm slowing down. George was still clutching the medicine bottle in one hand and the spoon in the other. Oh, well, he thought, why not? He poured out a second dose and popped it into her mouth. Ooh-wee, she screamed, and up she went again. Her feet were still on the floor downstairs in the living room, but her head was moving quickly towards the ceiling of the bedroom. I'm on my way now, boy, she called down to George. Just watch me go. That's the attic above you, Grandma, George called out. I'd keep out of there. It's full of bug bugs and boggles. Crash! The old girl's head went through the ceiling as though it were butter. George stood in his bedroom, gazing at the shambles. There was a big hole in the floor and another in the ceiling. And sticking up like a post between the two was the middle part of Grandma. Her legs were in the room below and her head in the attic. 
and that's it that's what George can see in his bedroom not very much of grandma just her middle part I'm still going came the old screechy voice from up above give me another dose my boy let's go through the roof no grandma no George called back you're busting up the whole house to heck with the house she shouted I want some fresh air I haven't been outside for 20 years by golly she is going through the roof George told himself he ran downstairs he rushed out of the back door and into the yard it would be simply awful he thought if she bashed up the roof as well his father would be furious and he George would get the blame he had made the medicine he had given her too much don't come through the roof grandma he prayed please don't and that's George praying that she doesn't come through the roof so he doesn't get into too much trouble and that is the end of that chapter so I wonder if she'll come through the roof